Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Dirk Slama. I'm a Vice President for Co-Innovation at Bosch and I'm also representing Bosch in the Industrial Internet Consortium. Today we want to talk about creating and managing RFPs for the Industrial Internet using IIC's RFP Toolkit. The audience is project managers and procurement managers or buyers who are actively looking into procuring a typically custom IoT solution. We are making one key assumption, which is that your IoT vision and solution strategy has already been defined as the foundation for your procurement process. The benefits for you will include getting a better quality solution from your selected vendor, as well as getting the solution delivered in time and at the best possible cost. In order to achieve this, the RFP toolkit consists of five elements. First, we have challenges, risks, and mitigation. Second, we have the actual project planning. Third, we have the RFP creation, which will be supported by number four, which is the IC online RFP wizard, which will help you creating the initial draft of your RFP document. And last but not least, number five, RFP distribution and vendor selection. So let's start by looking at challenges, risks, and mitigation. A typical IIT project is different from the projects that you might be used to. Let's take, for example, a traditional enterprise software project where you need um, either an off-the-shelf or a custom software solution running on cloud or on-prem. In an IoT project, you can add to that embedded hardware, embedded software, sensors, actuators, and so on. So you will have to integrate your assets, you will have to integrate your backend, you will have to use some kind of local area network probably, a wide area network, or even some specialized IoT specific networking technology, you will use artificial intelligence or even digital twin to support your use case and you want all of that delivered in a secure, resilient and reliable way. That's the more technical perspective on your typical IoT project. But like with many other large enterprise projects, there are other challenges. So for example, volatile requirements. It's very unlikely that you'll be able to have a stable version of potentially hundreds of, if not thousands of pages describing exactly your requirements and then use that, for example, as the foundation for a fixed price type of um, RFP. Another challenge you will face is balancing out the initial solution development versus the long-term maintenance. In a lot of cases, for example, we have observed that for the initial development, you might want to um, use an external uh, supplier, but then the long-term maintenance you want to do in-house. So how do you balance this out in terms of skills and knowledge handover and so on? And how do you also manifest this commercially in the uh, actual uh, procurement contracts and so on? And how do you already address this obviously in your RFP? Another key challenge you'll be facing is that the solution that you have developed will have an impact on your business processes. So the project will most likely involve some kind of business process re-engineering. It will have to deal with the typical enterprise politics. Um, compliance will be um, a major concern uh, and so on. And last but not least, like in most large projects, you as the project manager and or the procurement manager, you will have to balance out the scope, your features and functionality versus costs, your own resources or budgets for external resources, and obviously your time schedule. So all of these challenges naturally lead to a number of different risks. Some of these risks are direct procurement risks. Some of these risks 
are somewhere between procurement risks and project risks. So one group of risks, for example, deals with the selection of the wrong vendor, the wrong technology, the selection of bleeding edge or end-of-life technology, and so on. A clear risk is schedule overrun. So this can already start in the RFP project. Here is uh, what we call analysis paralysis, where you simply spend too much time in the RFP phase trying to get your requirements nailed down and in the course of this basically um, losing too much time in the RFP process that will then eat into your development time. Yeah. Or um, you simply will uh, see that uh, due to bad contract structure, for example, you're running into problems that uh, result in schedule overrun, in budget overrun, uh, and so on. Um, failure is always an option in these kind of uh, projects. So implementation failure, be it um, that the functionality that you require is not exactly as it should be, the system is not stable enough, the quality simply is not there, and all of that obviously can result in lack of user buy-in or worst case scenario really in business disruption. So that's why it's so important to really have a good grip on your procurement process. And there are a lot of examples for poor selection processes. They really start with bad stakeholder involvement or bad, badly structured uh, RFP documents, which are simply cut, copy, paste type of versions of uh, RFP documents from previous projects or limited due diligence. You don't have any real world validation of what the vendors are promising to you and so on. So all of this can really lead to um, poor selection and yeah, in the context of the risk discussion to all of the results that we just um, discussed in a negative way. How to mitigate this? How does a good selection process look like? Well, it really starts with good stakeholder management. Next, you have to find a way of dealing with your complex requirements, probably in a way that does not involve hundreds or thousands of pages of requirements, but rather find a way where the agile nature of these complex projects is somehow woven into your RFP and procurement process. Nevertheless, you will need a well-structured and concise RFP document you need an effective process for managing this document. Most likely, you will encounter still a lot of um, questions in the process from the different vendors. So you will need a structured Q&A process. You will need a solid due diligence process. You will need clear and transparent decision management. And last but not least, you will have to have effective negotiations with a clear win-win proposition for you and your selected vendor.